Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. Lifting is cardio? Some hot takes about lifting and cardio exist on the internet. For example, it's reported Arthur Jones states, Lifting of weights is so much superior for the purpose of improving the cardiovascular condition of a human being. I don't think anybody's disputing the fact lifting can get your heart rate up. But the question is, can lifting be highly effective for developing cardiovascular fitness long term? What cardiovascular fitness adaptations does lifting produce? And is it a proper replacement for cardio in certain contexts? Let's examine the scientific literature. High Intensity Interval Training HIT, is one form of cardiovascular training involving alternating between periods of intense exercise with less intense recovery periods. It's performed by cycling or running commonly, but it is possible to use standard weight training exercises. A 2018 study examined the effectiveness of this for VO2 max gains. 16 well-trained powerlifters and strongmen were assigned into either a HIIT lifting or HIIT cycling group. Both groups continued performing their resistance training as normal reporting to be in a hypertrophy or general strength phase, using these variables. However, the HIIT cycling group added two weekly HIIT cycling sessions, where they performed seven 30-second sprints at an 8-9 RPE, with 90 seconds of recovery between sprints. The HIIT lifting group added two weekly HIIT lifting sessions. One session used the squat, while the second session used the deadlift. Each session, the exercise was performed for 7 sets of reps up to an 8-9 RPE, using a 60% 1 rep max load and 90 seconds of rest between sets. On average, this group performed 8-15 to 15 reps per set in the duration of around 16-30 to 30 seconds. After 8 weeks, leg extension strength gains were similar between both groups, so neither HIIT protocol impaired strength adaptations worse. Both groups successfully increased their VO2 max yet the gains were greater for the HIIT cycling group. So HIIT lifting certainly can enhance cardiovascular gains, but the gains are likely inferior to HIIT cycling. There are limitations to this study. I've mentioned them in the comments for those interested, but ultimately the limitations don't change the interpretation of the study. So why was HIIT cycling superior? After all, volume and intensity were equated between the HIIT cycling and lifting groups. It could be because most lifting doesn't involve constant effort throughout. It's easier to lower than to lift, and there are pauses in between repetitions. This can compromise the demand placed on the cardiovascular system versus something like cycling, which involves a fairly constant exertion of effort. Finally for this section, squats and deadlifts are relatively complex exercises. The subjects of the study were well-trained powerlifters and strongmen, so it may not be an issue for them. But for less trained individuals who really want to perform HIIT lifting, using less complex movements such as machine or dumbbell variations might be more sensible. Now, some machines and dumbbell variations can be less cardiovascularly demanding due to lower muscle mass involvement, but perhaps you compensate for this by just performing even higher rep numbers. Although the analyzed study suggests lifting isn't on par with more traditional cardio for cardiovascular fitness gains, it's still evidence lifting can positively influence cardiovascular fitness at the least. Indeed, although not always consistently found in the literature, resistance training can produce increases in capillary and mitochondria densities, two hallmark adaptations of traditional cardio. Capillaries are tiny blood vessels involved in delivering oxygen, nutrients, hormones, and other things to cells. Mitochondria are organelles involved in generating energy for various biochemical and physiological processes. Of course, increasing the density of these things enhances cardiovascular performance. Fascinatingly, eccentric heart hypertrophy in bodybuilders is not uncommon, and this is an adaptation prominently seen in endurance athletes that positively benefit the capacity of their heart. Of course, not all resistance training is equal. Training styles that prolong the duration of a set and involve shorter rest periods presumably enhance cardiovascular adaptations. For example, a 2019 Canadian study established that training with 30% one rep max loads more effectively increased the content of several mitochondrial proteins versus training with an 80% one rep max load. Circuit training with typical resistance training exercises is likely going to be quite effective at producing cardiovascular fitness adaptations. Generally, 
Circuit training involves performing multiple different exercises with short rest periods between them, and numerous rounds of these circuits can be performed in a session. A 2017 meta-analysis from Spain combined the data from numerous studies and established circuit training produced notable VO2 max increases. Some may be wondering if circuit training compromises hypertrophy and strength gains. Minimal data has examined this, unfortunately. But one 2011 Spanish study suggests it may be fine. 26 trained men were assigned to either a circuit or traditional group. The traditional group performed all the 3-6 sets on one exercise before moving to the next using three minutes of rest between sets and exercises. The circuit group performed two different circuits. For each circuit, subjects performed a set on each exercise with 35 seconds of rest between exercises to complete one round. This circuit was repeated for three to six rounds. Subjects rested five minutes before going on to their second circuit, where they did the same thing. After training thrice a week for eight weeks, bench press and half squat strength gains were similar between both groups, Lean mass body gains were also similar between both groups. The caveat is this is only one study, and lean body mass isn't the most precise measure of muscle hypertrophy. So can lifting replace cardio? Not truly, no. We've seen lifting certainly can develop cardiovascular adaptations, but it won't be near the magnitude of standard cardio. It's also probably the case that those who do increase their VO2 max the most from lifting are the ones with poor VO2 maxes to begin with. This is demonstrated by a 2013 Japanese analysis, which found those who increased their VO2 max the most from lifting were simply the ones with the lowest VO2 max to begin with. Also, long duration continuous cardio training with typical modes likely produces adaptations to a degree simply not attainable with lifting and even high intensity interval training. Specifically, Continuous cardio training is likely superior for enhancing mitochondria efficiency and respiration and truly producing substantial capillary density increases. I encourage individuals to not be afraid of adding dedicated cardio on top of their lifting. It can provide great health benefits. For example, a 2019 review and meta-analysis indicates resistance training alone was associated with a 21% decrease in risk of all-cause mortality while cardio plus resistance training was associated with a 40% decrease in risk of all-cause mortality. As thoroughly explored in a previous video, the idea cardio kills muscle and strength gains is largely overblown. Provided you're not super highly trained and or performing very high resistance training volumes, updated analyses fail to find adding cardio impairs muscle and strength gains. Moreover, as thoroughly examined in another one of the videos at the House of Hypertrophy, Various lines of scientific research indicate cardio can help you build more muscle in certain cases. Speaking of building more muscle, consistent training is vital, and tracking your progression and performance over time can help spot trends and enhance the understanding of your own response to various training. Alpha progression can greatly help this process. At the House of Hypertrophy, rest assured I'm never going to promote trash. Alpha progression is a unique and elegant app, rated 4.9 stars on Google Play, and 4.8 stars on Apple Store. You can input your program or use their custom generator that produces solid programs. You can periodize reps in reserve and sets and schedule deload weeks. Workouts can be tracked live and the app generates solid progression recommendations across sessions. Aesthetic graphs can track virtually any measure across time, like bench press strength, number of workouts a week, body weight, and even set numbers per muscle group and circumference measures of body parts. It has a clean design with a database of more than 450 exercises with great text and video tutorials. Through the link in the comments and description, you can get two weeks free of all its features, plus 20% off a subscription. If you do buy the app, the House of Hypertrophy will get 50%, so this sincerely helps support these free videos. Thank you. HIIT lifting style can be effective for increasing VO2 max, although not quite as good as HIIT with standard cardio modes. Lifting weights has been documented to cause a variety of positive cardiovascular adaptations, and variables that prolong the duration of sets and use short rest probably enhance these adaptations. Though lifting weights won't deliver these cardiovascular gains to the degree of standard cardio training, plus there are unique benefits to long-duration continuous cardio. Furthermore, those who see the largest VO2 max gains from lifting are likely the individuals with the poorest VO2 max levels to begin with. Now, 
it's worth remembering if you're performing cardio, the local endurance gains such as mitochondria and capillary adaptations are largely specific to the muscles trained. Therefore, using resistance training as a tool to enhance local cardiovascular adaptations in muscles not trained with your cardio is certainly not a bad idea whatsoever. Finally, I have a free ultimate guide to bench pressing ebook that covers these areas. Feel free to get it in the link in the comments and description.